running and running, running and running, running and running, running and running, running. What did you say? In this context, in this context, in this context, it's no disrespect. So when I break, so when I bust my rhymes, you break your neck. That's that's the opening. Yeah. Yeah, we got five minutes for us to disconnect Whoa. from all intellect and let the that's rhythm That's one of those effect. songs that, that existed. <laughs> what? That what? song. Oh, the. Oh, the. Do you remember the version? The alternate version that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, the original version. <laughs> nah, that's all. That's true alt heads like that yeah. one. All right, I think we. Sh- I think I did myself a shallot on the sound here. I think everybody's looking good. I think everybody's my, looking real good. That's my Pauly Pelosi. <laughs> I don't even know what he talks like, <laughs> but I just went straight to Rankin Bass character. <laughs> good morning, kids. Gee it's whiz, Pauly I can't Pelosi. believe it's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> he fractured my eye socket Where's with a ball peen hammer. There's candy. They're gonna be like <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Two episodes back to back. They they opened up talking yeah. about the Bobby hammer, Pelosi. the hammer and the Pelosi's. Match made in heaven. Some might say. Bang <laughs> bang, Paul Pelosi <laughs> silver hammer went straight. Peanut butter and jelly. Oh, match made in heaven. Some might say. Yeah. <laughs> what you about to see? Like Alfred Hitchcock. What you about to see? <laughs> the terrifying <laughs> short story. The deranged yeah. man. I forgot that Yo. he would. Intro some of his right. shit like a yeah. DJ, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. what you about to hear? Some hot shit, yeah. right? Like it's a, ra- like it's a radio Fresh play. Off the street. <laughs> <laughs> what you're about to hear is a st- one of the strangest events you'd ever seen. <laughs> they used to say the most basic sentences for for shit like that. It's like you're about to see the most crazy story that you've ever heard. Like old X Men X Men yeah. comics would open like that. Yeah, the most like, astonishing tale you've ever heard. The, mo- <laughs> the most spectacular <laughs> tale of mutant children. The series yeah. of events that you are about to witness. The, the well, beginning of Frankenstein is so funny. The most mind-boggling events. The, be- the beginning of Frankenstein is so funny because it's like, these are, the, it may horrify you. <laughs> <laughs> it may shock you. Right. <laughs> like, well, like, we warn you. <laughs> like, literally yeah, yeah. that shit. Right. The, like, right. They cut away the They're really of that. selling it. Yeah. Really selling it. They cut to just them in a room, just like I told you, didn't I? Dude, that's the funniest part about that movie, Hancock, is he was watching Frankenstein in theaters uh-huh. when when he originally, because he's like immortal, right, right? Right. He's like, yeah, I was watching Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Right. Yeah. When was the last time y'all saw Hancock? I don't want to no, watch I, Hancock I was, again. Uh, it's a good movie. <laughs> you watched is, it recently? Yeah, Hancock, it. maybe stop blowing holes in my house, okay, buddy? Wait, that's Mark Jason Wal- Bateman in it. Oh. oh but, you're saying yeah. Mark Wahlberg was hey, in the Yeah. Hancock. Yeah. Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> you can't no. do this, bud. Hey, no. Hancock, what no. did we say about but, about breaking holes in my wall? We're just we're supposed okay? to find the terrorists, not rip them to shreds. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hancock, what's more important than anything? Let the bomb is down, Hancock. <laughs> Leave family, them alone. They're going to prison, all right? I forget. Family, okay? I forget family. that you lived in Boston. Did you live in Boston? Dude, that shit. Well, you yes, I Boston, did for right? four years. Yeah, yeah, I forget that. That shit, though, the marathon happened days after I left to visit school. I was in wow. that area. My school is, like, right next to all that shit, like wow. a couple blocks away from it. So, and it happened, like, the Monday, Tuesday after I went there that weekend to go look at schools. And to think the next went to Harvard, of course. And to think the next day, Chris Rock was on SNL doing jokes about it. Was he? Yeah. You don't remember that joke? What was no. his joke? Oh, it was like bombing a marathon is like the the most fucked up crime you could ever do. Because like the worst thing you could you could tell somebody after running twenty four twenty six miles is run. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. That is technically a joke, it's, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that made a lot of people involved in that tragedy feel a lot better a week yeah. after. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's so yeah. true, though. Yeah, like, it's like, it was that worse. Was, that did On suck. top of being exhausted, like, we all were terrified. Chris it's really like, took the weight off the whole yeah. thing when he you said know, that. You know what? Finally, we can just laugh again. <laughs> now, <laughs> it's like, now that I think about it, that did suck to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, yeah. it's just bombings happening to people minding their own business, not trying to complete a <laughs> right. life goal. Yeah, most bombings happen after you haven't done any athletic <laughs> yeah, uh, after you're activities. Pl- find a run, you know? <laughs> I was tempted to try and break out a Chris Ryan impersonation, but I haven't practiced. <laughs> yeah, I was afraid of what was gonna come out the first, the first noise to come out. You know. Yeah. 
Shout out, <laughs> shout out <laughs> Jimmy Fallon, classic Chris. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, let me pull up the yeah. let me pull up the receipts. Hold on for those. The worst thing you can do. This is you can say thank after you. running a marathon is run. Now it's talking about bombs and marathon. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's like Wait. and the New York <laughs> marathon's going on like right now. It just ended yesterday. It Hold yesterday. on, I'm yeah. so glad. So for people who don't know Jimmy Fallon, if you don't know by now, I mean, come on. Uh, Jimmy Fallon <laughs> did on. blackface as Chris uh-huh. Rock. Yep. What a lot of people, what less people know, is that Joni Mitchell also did blackface. What? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me pull up Joni Mitchell in black. This is a classic. And she, and First she, of all, that's insane. And she defended it oh, when she was called out for it. Yeah. Did, would, was she doing a character or just her? Just, it uh, is all bad. There is no, it is bad. <laughs> the more, <laughs> I'm saying, the more she, details that I give about this, the more disappointed everyone will be. That's so funny. I promise you. Oh, it's, al- it's, it's man, almost no. worse than if it was just some like surface level racist shit. It's like liberal racist, her like mm-hmm. rationale for it. Mm-hmm. It's like like the rationale Japanese people who do blackface in Japan use of like, like AI. Right. I'm just like really inspired picture. by black oh artists, God. and this is how I sh- this is how I'm showing my appreciation. Actually, no. Jeez, was an album cover? There are p- plenty. Of was this images. like an ongoing character, like Andy Kaufman, like? <laughs> Jesus. And you know who How else did blackface? Wa- Billy Crystal. Can you Billy believe it? Did she have a fucking Vogue cover of just being in blackface? There's like eight photos of this. Yes. This is like costume changes are happening. Yes. Oh my God, man. <laughs> I can keep going too. This is a different outfit. Imagine this being is, on acid and you see Joni outfit. Mitchell in so blackface. Right. <laughs> At a party. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, what? <laughs> You still know up. it's her. You're like, was that Joni Mitchell? <laughs> you know exactly who it is. <laughs> I think that was Joni Mitchell yeah. in blackface. That looked like Joni Mitchell. I think you've done too much acid tonight, Tom. That's like you think you're roasting somebody. You're like, you look like Joni Mitchell in blackface, and then just camera slowly zooms in. <laughs> <laughs> Curb music plays. This is a uh, low res image of oh Billy Crystal in a. Sammy Davis Jr. Oh Blackface. Oh, he's Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Every time. And he did, I guess he did an updated version. Uh, like he... He rebooted it? He did at some... This looks like in the last 10 to 12 years, maybe. Stop. This looks like it was in like Moulin Rouge. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that was... Was that in the last 10 to 12 years? That I, looks like it could have been in the 2012 80s. article. <laughs> uh, 2012 article in the historical record. <laughs> yes. Fucking camera Billy, roll blackface photos that we gotta have to put Billy in Billy right. Crystal. Oh my god. Bro. Billy Mike Wazowski. No Crystal. gods, no masters. Kill your fucking <laughs> idols, bro. Once they I realized will fucking Mike, let you down ten, nine times, ten times out of ten. When Mike Wazowski's blackface photos came out, God died. That's to, it for me. <laughs> <laughs> To the thirty people that were still standing, Billy Crystal, <laughs> yeah. or the people, or the Stand, people that stream Billy Crystal, right, the, maybe the people that regained hope after what the Tonys that he hosted was that what it was? I don't know. I know he just is like ninety nine. I wouldn't have nothing if I didn't have blackface. blackface. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know the Monsters Inc. song? I wouldn't oh, have nothing no. if I didn't have you with John Goodman. <laughs> You're like you weird out me. Hey, I don't know mid man. I don't. <laughs> I don't study. Sorry, mid. that's sort of in the <laughs> mid. <laughs> I don't study of mid. cultural right, references. Right. Yeah, I don't go over there. That hey, can much. we pump up the low end and the high <laughs> yeah. and turn the mid all the way down? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Please. I don't study mid. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I don't. Not a lot. God. Oh man, bro. You know the. I think. When I tell the story, I I say it's the same week, but I think it was like just very close together. I was like, uh, I was in talks with Jimmy Fallon's Booker to do a set on the show, and they came back. Their only note was like, "Yeah, his comedy is a little bit too like racial." Uh, it was like, well, they use the phrase "black versus white." And you, then you, you the, said this on the show, I think. Oh, did I? Yeah. Okay. Well, now it's. <laughs> 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 For those who. 
can't recall. For those who can't Kizoye, sit to, continue? through th- a three-hour show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then right after that happened, he was on Twitter apologizing for doing blackface. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. Well, not funny, but yeah. It's pretty funny. It's very it funny. It is funny. Yeah. I, uh, if I may, I just wanted to say, because how, I mean, how far are we into this one? Not very much. <laughs> <laughs> If you're watching, uh, we need we need editors. So jaded hub at protonmail.com. We have editors. We have a couple, in fact, for various things. But we could always use more help. I'm begging you. Begging I'm you. I'm begging you to just not be a dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you please. email us, please. I'm begging you, don't be a dude. Please. If you're a woman who is interested, has the the skill sets. It's a lot of dudes yeah, right now. It's true. It's a lot of that's dudes. that's the whole catch twenty two. If you're starting out with a lot of dudes, mm-hmm. it makes it harder for other people to come in. Mm-hmm. Right? But you can't have all dudes. Can't have all dudes. So you gotta figure it out. You gotta figure out that's when what's to going open the doors. on over here. Yeah, you're trying help to keep us out. Throw us a open. bone, please. <laughs> <laughs> throw us a bone. Throw, anything. throw us an intersectional diversity <laughs> bone here, please. Please, will you? <laughs> We're begging you. Um, yeah. Yes. Do that. Thank um, you for bringing that up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we can use a lot of help. And yeah. Um, yeah, just to be clear, unfortunately, not paid. It may shock you. We don't get paid to do this. Right. So That's the other part of it too. Yeah. Yes. Right. When it's people giving their labor. Right. It's another barrier to entry for people who maybe can't yeah. afford or don't have the time, don't have the Absolutely. means. Yes. Absolutely. So it's another Which thing is that- understandable. So Another if, thing that we're aware of. So if you're well. a wealthy black woman who's, like, <laughs> who's great at editing, um, email, email us at jadedhub Has at some Pro- hours to kill. Yeah, jaded, jadedhub at protonmail.com. Yeah. Yeah. Also, if you are a wealthy black woman, how about uh, subscribing to us on opencollective.com <laughs> <laughs> while you're Oprah, at it. we're waiting. Oprah. I'm sure the sperming conversation <laughs> highlight <laughs> got you right here. Oh, yeah. You've been watching yeah. for a while now, I'm sure. But. Uh, yeah. Long time um, spermer, first time caller. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I should help them. <laughs> they need help. They, they need it. help to do yeah. this more. They deserve yeah. it. They, um, we need more of this. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Before we started recording, I was saying to Connor, I don't even know where to start in terms of like mm. current events and the chaos of just what is happening right now as this is as we're recording this. But my mind yeah. went straight to fucking Elon Musk and his oh. him becoming yeah, I was like, the Twitter what? dictator. We should just start with the yeah. most obvious. Let's get into it. Yeah. Well, I said, I said to Connor, this might have to be a f- the whole episode might have to be a digital Zion promo episode. Yeah. Because we're like, living in digital Zion just, now. Just, <laughs> you can either join us or not. Right. <laughs> just go ahead and drop the promo right now. <laughs> just yeah. preface the rest of the episode. Just do it as a you know. Just. Oh, <laughs> my God. Platforms like YouTube, Patreon, Spotify, they're all ass. They don't respect your privacy, they're riddled with ads, and they're completely silent and unreachable when you need help. Have you ever talked to somebody at YouTube? Think about that. I sure haven't. To top it all off, we don't control them at all, despite being the reason they exist. So that's why we're partnering with a design and development agency called Sanctuary Computer to build our own cooperative alternatives that bring the best features of all those platforms together and that we can control together too. We seriously got to have an exodus to some sort of digital Zion that we've built ourselves. Somewhere where all of us can actually have a say over the technology that we're using to communicate with each other. For more on how you can support us all in getting off these shitty platforms, visit opencollective.com slash digital Zion and tap in. Just because these dystopian systems are eating themselves alive doesn't mean they got to take us with them. And we're back. Yeah, so <laughs> look, that's what we need. All right. Yeah. No, but uh, the thing I saw that was on my radar in the last day or so was Ethan Klein of H three H three getting booted yeah. off because he changed his uh, profile name to Elon Musk. Yeah, right. And didn't say parody yes. in the name. Yeah, this is a new rule that you have to say parody in the name account name and the bio, the description for the mm-hmm. profile. Oh, wow. And uh, so Elon just did this total alpha power move where he <laughs> he just like tweeted out like 
took his cock out really and just <laughs> let it hang and he said if you don't follow this rule you're gone before they gave you warnings i give no warnings you're gone i'm the boss now i'm you're the captain out. of this ship now and it made me really fucking hard i paid 44 <laughs> billion dollars to make a mean girls burn book <laughs> <laughs> That's literally <laughs> no one thinks it's cool <laughs> to make this all look Stop trying to make worse. me happen, bro. <laughs> Stop yeah. trying to make Elon happen. <laughs> oh my! Stop God. trying to make Emerald Mine happen. It didn't yeah. happen. <laughs> Someone shout out to Cat a Basis, K A T A Basis on Twitter, who said the fun thing about posting mean jokes about Elon Musk on Twitter is you know there's a startlingly huge chance he is actually going to read it and it will right. hurt his feelings. Right. And that's like truer than I think yeah, there's a, a yes. unifying spirit to that because that's not like they they followed that up with another good point. They were like, uh, like I can post mean shit about the Sackler family or the Wilkes brothers or even other celebrity billionaires like Gates and Bezos all day long, but they will never read it. And if by some chance they did, it would mean nothing to them. Elon is a soft target. Yeah. And it's just really true because, you know, he's probably the most get under skinnable person. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Out there. Yeah. 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 I got under his skin. I have a story. I'm not going to tell it. Right oh, now, yeah. Because I'm familiar too, with that one. Yeah, but yeah. too many, too many details. But yeah. But right. also saying that to say yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there Just was the Italian. And I didn't do it. I also for in my context and they they know I didn't do it in this like even asshole. This was years ago. I didn't even no. do it in this asshole way. It was that I was asking questions that got right. to the root of who he fucking is in his fucking yeah, you were giving Being generously right. good faith. In that and moment. it just, it yeah. clearly just upset him that those yeah. questions were being raised to him. So you, you know? left South Africa in the early 90s. What was that about? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Hmm? Anything, any big events going on in that period of time? <laughs> yeah. Why were you in 1992? Huh? Yeah, no, uh, I think there was an Italian Elon Musk, too. Yes. Uh, yeah. Account which got banned or blocked by him or yeah. something like that back in the day. Yes. Um. But yeah, the the immediate thing I want to say, because we we, you know, beat the drum on this point all the time of oh we don't control these platforms and like we have to build our own alternatives. Once you get past that sort of realization, then you start diving into the particulars of like, all right, well, what's the alternative that we're building? How is mm -hmm. it designed? Mm -hmm. What's the back end sort of like systems architecture for it? Like, what is actually going to make it? better and more secure and sustainable and so on and so forth and i'm thinking about how and this has happened before but i'd imagine now i haven't verified it but i'd imagine now there, it's an even larger load of people going to mastodon now yeah every time there's like sort of hiccups or news about twitter or whatever it's like oh going to mastodon but it's never like a critical mass or, or something like that where you right. actually feel like everyone's doing it but I've seen more people are like, oh, well, let's go to let's go to Mastodon. And like my issue with Mastodon has always been one, how similar in its baseline fundamental design it is to Twitter. Right. And I have fundamental issues with the ent that entire format of like sharing ideas and like communication and interaction and how it's right. like gamified. You know, it's mm -hmm. like mastodon doesn't deviate from it, it basically keeps the same core design elements and just brings it over in a more uh decentralized form the other thing that the other problem i've had with mastodon is they have issues around accessibility and discoverability yeah so it's like well if you go and you create your own server or whatever it might be how are you how can you like find the, the pulse, like the cultural or subcultural pulse? How can you find what's already out there? Your audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like how do you actually find your people your, in, a, in a way that's clear and accessible? And then the last issue I have with Mastodon is their fucking logo is an elephant. Mm. It's like just Democrats? horrible branding. It just <laughs> looks ugly. The name is three syllables. Or Republicans. Ma I Mastodon. Guess. Not Dem yeah. Democrats are the donkeys. Yeah. Let me show you. I uh, While you're doing that, I no, actually... No, but seriously, three syllables, ugly ass elephant? Come on. Well, that's what a Mastodon is, obviously. Yeah. I know, no, I'm just saying. It's like, it's just a aesthetically gross, like, dumb, clunky thing to me. And it's fair. 
and <laughs> I like and, elephants. And, 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 I'm sorry. And, I'm sorry. No, no, I love elephants. No, and that's I fair. Love, and look, you can you can you present that, that, that as objective fact. <laughs> I already <laughs> told. I already told them. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah. Oh, oh that is God, an ugly man. ass. Looks like that is dog an ugly shit. ass logo. That's what I'm saying. That's terrible. Man. Yeah, no, that does look like ass. Yeah. <sighs> it looks like uh, eyes with a smile more than it does an elephant's trunk to me. It looks like uh, a guy going. Bleh. It looks. It looks. It looks <laughs> like a. It looks like a whale that's thinking about McDonald's. Yeah, it looks like exactly. <laughs> yeah, who's smelling yeah. McDonald's? Yeah, that is <laughs> yeah. so accurate. It looks like Pearl from fucking. From fucking um oh from SpongeBob yeah, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like peep this image I'm about to pull up too. Yeah, that's terrible. Like, come on, I'm not fucking eight. <laughs> I'm not eight. <laughs> like, get this shit out of yeah. my face. <laughs> Make it fucking Jack Skellington with two Uzis, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doing that, the doom yeah, pose. Yeah, that's what I want. Doing yeah, the yeah. doom pose. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> This is some baby shit, dude. It's Mastodon. <laughs> oh, that, that, you know who that looks like? That, that's what that, this is what this screams to you me. You know who that oh looks like? God. That looks like, uh, that looks like, <laughs> that looks like tree trunks from Adventure Imagine Time. getting fired from a place with this in the bathroom. Like, just a mural of, dino, <laughs> of elephants in the WeWork. It's Mastodon. Right. What is Mastodon? I don't know. What the fuck is it? Look, look. Nuanced me coming in here. <laughs> there are cool, great things about having a more de decentralized, these nuts or decentralized, oh, 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 open source communications, open, 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 no, holes. Holes. Source? <laughs> open source, open source, <laughs> open orb, <laughs> orb and orifices. Um, Eminem just like, no, keep talking in a meeting. Yeah, yeah. Right. Morphosis, morphosis, <laughs> mastodon. That's a long neck. <laughs> <laughs> but you get you get what I'm yeah, saying. No, it's the, like, the no, the elephants yeah, are yeah. could be cooler for doesn't sure. Doesn't go all the yeah. way and look. And I tried explaining this to someone before. Went just clean over their head. Mm -hmm. The people that like are maintaining and sustaining this this project, um, like the core the core group, the the founders, the people that spearheaded it, they're not grounded in like democratic cooperative like governance and decision making right. either mm. and i think that's really fucking important it's like yeah. conway's law it's like yeah the 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 governance and decision making systems of the people that are making the thing are going to inform the thing that they put out and that people use right so conway's like, law do i <laughs> Kanye, like, do conway I really, the machine's law dude. conway's machine do i <laughs> ultimately trust something where that's sort of even if it is more decentralized and it's like dude just fucking it's open source take it you can make your own fucking server it doesn't matter <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> mm -hmm. people are still going like to to their sort of the initial yeah. hubs that they open up it's just yeah. like with any other platform if you yeah. put up the money and you're paying like certain costs and bandwidth that's where people are going to go first and it's like well this is the these are the values that are undergirding this. I don't okay. trust and I, okay, and I no. assume they could probably block or take dismantle any server like little hub if they wanted to from I like what's the governance like? If not, not I don't even know what it is okay, also. So. Not nuance take. I I downloaded Mastodon in this little wave just to see <clears> what's <throat> up. And I've never lost interest in an app so fast. Yeah. It's just the just the first page is the most inaccessible shit I've ever yes, seen in my exactly. life. Like, why are there like, it's all everything is written like it's a fuck like it's source code or some right. shit. And so I'm trying to just find information and find like right. a place to Let me just pull it up. They maybe up. They probably updated it, but I mean, it's let's see. But you're saying people can run their own servers? Yes, like, in an uh, instance. Well, because so, no, I'm thinking of like it, it isn't like Twitter, so it is not like. Well, I'm thinking of like subreddits. How like you have subreddits, but it's like Reddit can still delete your subreddit. I yeah, I get what you're saying. Is this Ma This is Mastodon. Yeah. See, and, and their their homepage didn't well, used to be like this, but you see how it's like it's up front. It's it's coming from the standpoint of like. It's not like onboarding for a casual user. It's onboarding for someone who's going to build this sort of like their own instance yeah. and communications uh, 
infrastructure on this broader like protocol. Right. You and get like, what I'm saying? The first page, like when you hit get started, the first page is not even like make a profile. It's Mastodon is made of users on different servers. Pick a server based on your interest region or general purpose one, or uh, you can still connect with everyone regardless of server. And it just says, it says search servers. And then you start typing, uh, let, let's say, butts. There's no, su no suggestions pop up if wow. you hit it. It just you get an error message. Wow. Butts doesn't appear to be a Mastodon a Mastodon inst instance. I'm like, okay, what well, what if I want to make a butts instance? How do I do that? And there's there's nothing. There's nothing. Not impressive. Well, this is see, and this is design stuff. These are design this these problems are some of the most easiest <clears throat> to fix and address. It's the fact that like they, some of these issues have been brought up to them for years, but because of how they're the governed yeah. and their attitude it's like go go you go do it then i don't give a fuck yeah. you know like that's sort of their whole right. their whole like vibe um which in at a certain level is fine like that's good to encourage people to bootstrap their own things but it's also like you know how much time and effort and energy that takes right. why don't we just work together um but where did you find that uh See how fucked it is that I'm asking. Where did you find that get started? Uh, uh that's just on the app. Oh, yeah. Probably go like, to see, they had different probably go to different inter interface. They had third yeah. party apps before. They didn't have. They didn't used to have like a main app. Oh, word. Either. Yeah. Well, they do now, and it's it's no good. Oh, to be fair to them, I'm on airplane mode. I just realized. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Needs to work on airplane what mode too. What am I too. doing? I need to be able to fly. And use what am it. I doing? Okay, you know what? Let me turn let me turn it off for a, for a hot second. Maybe we get some audio interference for three seconds. Okay, still no suggestions come up for butts. But still does not appear to be a Mastodon. Come instance. There's no Joshua Henderson Pog instance on <laughs> Mastodon. <laughs> well, my uh, I just understand type. Pog. That's Oh, you don't remember the last name you'll ever hear? <laughs> the thick kind. That yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that guy. I love that guy. Pogs. P A W G. And then they're like, I like how you said that. Say it again. Pogs. P A W G. Oh man. <clears throat> Joshua Henderson. Remember the name. <laughs> um, but no, I wanted to say real quick though. You, it is. It is decentralized. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know the particulars of their policies and, well, I was just... and also how, but it just is to that point, it isn't like Twitter where you have someone who's just, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, but you can also see how that introduces problems too. Like if, if something, <clears throat> that's one of those, those things where the distinction between decentralization and like distribution is like, uh, really important. Because yeah. if something is 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 fully decentralized, it creates opportunities for monopolization, and uh, mm -hmm. abuse, and all different kinds of things. You know, so you need like just more broken up trust based networks and, and yeah. systems. So where there is some, there's a sense that there's there's checks and balances, without this like one size fits all. You know, right, right. Yeah, I was. I'm just curious, like, on the on the governance angle, um, more like what they're about, how they how they run their shit. Like, do they have do they have that level of control where like someone can make an instance and then they can just like get rid of it, or I, is it that decentralized that it's like nah, it's like hands off? I know nothing beyond just what I learned on the on the app. We should talk about subreddits no though, because like I don't know. I always I always like how those are kind of um different than everything else like how those yeah. are kind of like just separately modular. moderated and moderate did i say moderated 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 mod mated um, um but yeah it's like it <clears throat> it's kind of like you can have your own little world within a world there yeah and it doesn't can... it doesn't have to be like all of twitter can see what right you're doing you have to be part of the yeah, conversation, and you, and you can have your own rules. You accept the terms of entering this space, right? You can get kicked it, out of it if people don't like right, you in it. Right. And also, like you know, there's something to be said because Twitter is just like 
it's just you can infiltrate anything. Like you can get go yeah. anywhere. It's just all open. Yeah, you just change your profile picture and that's it. Yeah, there's... and there's just like you can see what everyone's like. The likes pop up shit in your algorithm. You get suggested shit now. If if your friend of a friend comments on something, you see that account. You know, it's just like it's all just very open. So you just get this big wall of information. Yeah, <clears throat> at all times, big flow. Yeah, the fuck the like constant scroll shit of Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and all the all these apps are just like yeah, it's... fully rotting my brain. I think <clears throat> you know. The the I, deep scrolling is concerning. Yeah. So I read about to so the thing you raised about Mastodon and like how the shit operates. I read stuff years ago, so I've just been like Googling to see if there's a uh, more updated information I can find. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh I found something from uh this forum and it's from another a year forum? a year ago and what? someone wrote The big problem I have with Mastodon is that it has a culture of censorship equivalent to Facebook. My recollection is that to be listed in their directory of instances, you need to abide by the content rules created by key Mastodon people. And those instances in turn are required to only peer with other instances that follow the same rules. This is normal shit. This is someone who's, Mm -hmm. this is probably a reactionary who's complaining that they can't, uh, have start a, a butts instance yeah have that, a, that is linked to their core this goes back to what i was saying about right. when they go you you go and make they your can't own have a like, jimmy well, everyone, Fallon right. and, um, everyone knows though that because you <laughs> Tony, what was it joni mitchell yeah fan club everyone knows because you the core people started this hub the platform that there's more you have more power and authority mm-hmm. and like access in that and that's mm-hmm. i think i don't know that that's i think that's sort of like unavoidable at a certain level yeah but then they go on to say those rules basically include moderation based on various progressive political stances. So you can't honestly discuss controversial topics from different perspectives. It creates a federated network that is still an echo chamber rather than a platform for civil discourse and free thought. And if that's the case, I am not sure why I need Mastodon or why I would lend it attention or credence. Yeah, I can't get a read on on that. So and then someone replied and they say Mastodon follows the activity pub protocol. There are other backends that implement the same protocol, like Pleroma. The Fediverse, all the systems that use activity pub, is bigger than Mastodon and much bigger than Mastodon.social and co. There's a sort of blocking firewall around Mastodon.social and sites broadly on the same side as it in that, I don't know what's going on with this uh, syntax I. here. All these servers tend to share block lists. One of the things they'll block a server for is being quote unquote free speech Yay. maximalists. Uh, okay. Huh. But outside of the mastodon.social bubble, there Maximal. are lots of free speech maximalist Fediverse instances that don't block anyone or block different people. Pleroma instances tend to be more free speech oriented because the technical choice of using Mastodon or Pleroma as your backend became part of a signaling game. I think Pleroma is better software anyway. Um, I don't know about okay. Pleroma, but you get the sense of... Right. There's still a thing. Jimmy yeah. Kimmel also did blackface. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yes. We definitely touched on this in a, both the Jimmys. We did. We did. We did. But, but it's okay to revisit right. sometimes. You see the you see the like the organizational and like governance parallels though like yeah. the person in that forum was basically saying it's more or less the same shit. Well, no, well, or... no, they're saying, well, sure, yeah, I can make my own instance over here, but I'm not gonna get seen because the people that have these libtard cuck values aren't gonna let me in. <laughs> Right. To be seen by a wider group of people or connect with a wider group of people. Right. So I feel ice. I'm like isolated. Oh, to get on right. the server list unless of you their, know right. the name of it. Right. Basically. What do you mean? Like you're not searchable, but or you're searchable, but you're not going to be suggested or. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. I don't know. That seems kind of fair to be honest. It is. <laughs> it's, it's like you can still <laughs> use all of our code and everything and yeah. exist. It is. Yeah. But yeah, I was just sharing that in response to you wondering gotcha. what yeah. they're. This is like a big, um, like conversation piece, though, because, like, uh, let me see. 
there was an article I remember seeing um, where they were basically talking Your about. Up. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck happened? I'm like, how do you deal with fascists? Mm-hmm. Right on, on Macedon. Look. You feed them to the elephants. How the biggest decentralized social network is dealing with its Nazi problem. I love the uh, frogs. Interesting. Mastodon was built to be a kinder, more decentralized version of Twitter. Then Gab showed up. This is from 2019. And yeah, I remember this article gets into the tough questions. The tough, the tough cues. The conundrums. <laughs> you see, Mastodon isn't a social networking website. It's a way to host one yourself. Cool. Cool. So how are we getting people off of Twitter? How, are you, how do we get people off of Twitter? We will answer that question. Oh. <laughs> Take a shit. <laughs> I got the ski for you. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> First jaded shit. First jaded dookie. <laughs> oh, I what, didn't know wait, that Gab, Gab. I didn't know that Gab was um, a Mastodon node. I oh. never knew that. You, you're not familiar I'm with not Gab. Not familiar with Gab. What it's like it? one of the most popular, like far right, right wing, oh. like social media networks and platforms. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, wasn't familiar. Um, and then what's the what's the one? There's another Parler one. Is Parler's the, is the one Kanye bought, right? Uh, on behalf of Candace Owens, whose husband is apparently the owner. Yeah, that was the whole thing that that popped up after uh after that whole discourse is just Kanye got played. He saved a dying platform just so he can just so he can be mad at th- three Jewish dudes, basically. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Legit three people. That's a while. I was actually talking to Niles about this yesterday. I forget the dude's name, but um, one of the people he was uh, he was pissed at was literally the dude who, by himself, mind you, invented the three sixty deal. Mm-hmm. And just like his fucked over, mad black artists, and it's what. <laughs> It's an interesting conversation because it's like, wait, who is this specifically? Sorry, I'm, I'm, it, uh, I'm talking about Kanye, but the dude he, the three sixty, uh, the deal. three thick, the three sixty deal dude. I don't remember his name, but um, but he is a Jewish man. Oh, and you're they, talking about what is his name? Um, I know who. I'm, I'm having a brain fart. Lior Cohen. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And uh, before people think I'm like pointing that out for. <laughs> oh, fucked right. up for fucked up reasons <laughs> um it's like you have to have that n- just the ability to parse the fact that like yes there are some jewish people in the entertainment industry who have fucked over black people but also there are people of every race that have fucked over black people everybody is making money including off black, black people, people including black people <laughs> y'all forget about barry gordy real fucking fast <laughs> when shit like this happens it's it's wild and don't even get me started on russell simmons don't even get me started. i mean russell's into some other things but we'll talk about <laughs> that at some other point in the future mm. some sexual assault yeah yeah just a little bit of that just a little bit of that um yeah but yeah I don't know, man. This it's... is related to what I was just talking to Connor about. Um, just in terms of like how identity informs who we choose to work with and not work with. Yeah, right. And um, obviously us as black people, we don't want to be a part of like white supremacist institutions or groups or organizations. And by white supremacists, I'm not talking about necessarily where white people like, are aware like and self intentional. about yeah a, right. a, 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 yeah where they're they're saying i'm a white supremacist or i'm a racist it's even spaces that are just majority white right and it's a collective of majority white people that do not have a care in the world or concern about trying to change things or 
accommodate or mm-hmm. re- representation in whatever whatever context. And sometimes those institutions have a history of, uh, you know, maybe they happen to have insured slaves in their, uh, <laughs> in the 1800s, and now they're trying to erase that history of how they made right. their uh, their capital, uh, right. Chase Bank. But but and, we we obviously like yeah we know that we 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 share that it's understood right but when you get more granular as i put it to Con- to connor it's like you have to you, now you have to stand on some like baseline organizational mm-hmm. even just human values and principles right and when you start interrogating things at that layer and that level you start to see all of the openings for where we can work with people of all different kinds of backgrounds right. to ultimately do things that serve black liberation and freedom, our yeah. freedom yeah. as people, but our freedom is tied to the freedom of, of other people, of yes. white people, people of other backgrounds. But this is where the intersectionality piece is important because it's like, we're also talking about poor and working class people. And we're mm-hmm. talking about people who understand where they are in terms of class and right all those other things so it's like a lot of layers to it but when you when you yeah. look at it through this lens you can you can just see how ridiculous yeah this and kind of shit is i you mean know? it's like if you you look at it I, I i think a lot about the phrase like post-racial society and to a degree i this is a very unnuanced sentence but like to a degree i believe that's true in the sense that people of any race any background can participate in capitalism and use the power that they gain or even that. white supremacy or white supremacy to <laughs> i mean yeah which is crazy yeah but yeah um and use the power that they gain from that to oppress people that look like them people that don't look like them even even people that are supposed that are on the basis of their racial identity more privileged than them you know Kanye mm-hmm. is better off than really most Jewish people. Right. You know? But that's not a that's not a version of the world that we're used to accepting or talking right. about. Right, right. You know? And so it's like... It goes back to this individual... Understanding the distinction between individual collective. Yes. You have to understand, like, we're, we're de- they're connected, but when it comes to the day-to-day, how we interact with people, yeah. what we do, it's different. We're talking about different levels here. Right. So we we move with this broader macro systems awareness, but in the day-to-day, if you're serious about deconstructing these broader systems, mm-hmm. we have to fucking work with each other. Yes. We just do. It's not yeah. even a debate. It's not a conversation. Right. There's no debate. I mean, the means by which we do that, we could talk about that all day long. Right. But in terms of like that baseline reality of like, <clears throat> no, we don't just, we can't just drift off into our isolated, right. like ethnic or racial imagined community silos and then somehow expect to it's, survive. It's like, how all do you, of the ex- things that are fucking right. collapsing on us? It's, right. like, it's just not, how reality. do you think the world is going to operate if we just have, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of just ever expanding pyramids that are just bumping up against right. each other forever right you know, when we could just level all this shit out and just kind of and just cooperate you know what I'm right saying? yeah i feel like there's a general idea that people think that we just have like an earth and it'll just be here and we can just kind of yeah. we're chilling like, well the thing right, about it is right yeah the, that's like it'll is. just always be here yeah. there'll be places to go yeah, yeah, yeah. well the yeah. thing is earth will always be here. Oh, yeah. it's earth just a will. matter of yeah. whether yeah. we will yeah. You know? yeah you know it's like i don't know man <laughs> it's kind of related. Just, to, it's kind of related to the passage I wanted to read from this this article on Mastodon. It's, yeah, it's towards the end of this the uh, mm-hmm. Verge piece. Yeah, they go. Mastodon's conundrum is a microcosm of a much larger conflict online. The internet has given billions of people a way to amplify their voices, but the trade offs have become tangible. Abolishing gatekeepers can allow misinformation and hate to flourish. Uncensored online forums can become co opted by bigots and harassers silencing their less powerful targets and in the face of violent supremacist movements targeting real people openness once an uncontroversial pillar of internet culture can seem like a hopelessly abstract principle 
And then they go, right now, Mastodon and its members are navigating between two bad options. If they completely ignore Gab, they could end up as a less welcoming community for marginalized people. But if they go to war, they risk fracturing Mastodon in the process. And either way, for the moment, Gab has arguably upstaged the work of admins and developers who have been nurturing their communities for years. Um, hmm. The piece, in my interpretation, ends on a question mark, but it's like an important, an important. Yeah, I was way. just thinking, like, it's good that we're at least talking about this and trying to figure it out because we just know. I feel like just more the more people accept that, like, these things are not good. Like, they could be better. Even just that simple of an idea. Like, these apps, these, like, giant channels that right. we're all on. The connection, though, between Mastodon, the Mastodon thing, and what we were just talking about in a broader... They were they were saying, oh, it's true for online more broadly. It's, like, true for, like, in terms of society. It's, like, if we're talking about more decentralized and distributed systems, mm -hmm. how are we dealing with and confronting <laughs> authoritarianism and fascism and these how these where these tendencies bubble in a way where yeah. we're still in embracing and holding on to cooperative and democratic values mm -hmm. and principles right. and to me it does go back to the decentralization versus distribution distinction and conversation right. it's like us like in this room and people who agree with our values and our politics and whatever we have to come together and organize and join forces and in my mind hope that there's a, enough of a critical mass of people that are on the same page mm. to where these types of tendencies and whatnot can't flourish and then ultimately you know swing back to bite us in the ass right. right you know and it does come down to like what do you stand on what values do you stand on mm -hmm. and like the spaces that you're opening up digital or in real life like how does it ref reflect those values right and how are you going to de defend whatever it is that you're building right you know right <sighs> shit she, man when i me personally <laughs> me personally I wouldn't take that level of disrespect. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's like trust. Yeah. Trust. Like just saying, yeah, no, don't fuck with this. This is what I do fuck with. Mm -hmm. We're on the same yeah. page about that. Right. And we don't care to let anybody else in or build with anyone who doesn't understand these things. Right. You yeah. know? Yeah. But then it's like, Shit, sometimes I start sentences and I don't have a <laughs> No, bro, I'm thinking my head's swirling with I'm thought. like so sleepy, but also have so much energy. I don't know where the fuck my, my brain is at right now. It sounds like you but need a sperm, dude. That sounds Get like a I sperm got a, out real quick. I fucking sperm today, man. Um, you know what I think it is, though? I think it's that this this conversation that we're talking about, there, there's no like, there's no clear consensus or like resolution yeah. for most people like on this subject and topic especially right. when it comes to online stuff because the, th the thinking goes oh you're starting this thing what is it only for leftists now what i gotta right. be malcolm x to join specs <laughs> you know i gotta be malcolm x to be on your platform but really it's like that's what that's the kind of like well and also just like the thing that always troubles me is like that people even getting what anti-authoritarianism is and mm, because i feel like right. a lot of people it's could so have deep. people could have the same values as us 90 percent, and then like there's just Dumb, another layer yes. it's like Cognitive oh but distance. yeah yeah you know right. and like they'll even for lack I think of a you better word be, i think you should beat your kids yeah totally or they'll just like right. they'll, <laughs> that kind of shit like they'll yeah. just kind of like infiltrate like they yeah. will have the same principles and Think not it's all even a good in idea. Malicious way you're saying it's like yeah. they, they know that they're not in full alignment, but they're like, eh, but I want to be in here. I yeah, right. I just don't. Yeah. I like. I think education is a big yes. part of this. Yeah, like huge. <laughs> yeah, and in, and in the like, onboarding, like in the sign up. Yeah, you right. can't right. right. just be in real. Life. I was it gonna can't say just be it like, can't just be on the platform. <laughs> yeah. the right, thing. it yeah. can't like, just be like, wow, look, these all interact, and isn't that cool? It's like, no, you also. Like, right. what is yeah. your code? Yeah. Right. What is your programming? Yeah. It's just as important. Like, 
Um, yeah, right. And that yeah. I feel like that's maybe what put me off of like just on the inaccessibility part of Mastodon, where it feels like it is more for just like anybody who who's like tech savvy and knows mm-hmm. knows how to function on the internet right which like when has that ever said anything about anybody's like right just moral outlook ethics uh right political leaning like that says absolutely nothing so it's like anybody who can figure out how to get on this app can yeah. get on and it's not me i'm not on the app i just have the app but like I, f- I feel I like know. part of this onboarding, because I feel like digital Zion is such a, our lives are so inextricable from the internet now, at least mine is, mm-hmm. yeah. that like digital Zion is like a, it will be almost like a way of life. Yeah. And I feel like part of onboarding that, enabling people is having that dialogue in front of them like we're doing, but then also, you know, you got to bake it in yeah. to the design of the actual platform yeah. and the onboarding, yeah. the signing. Yeah. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Right. Yeah. That's no, what I think. It, yeah. You like if think put yourself in Mastodon's shoes, like you have what they have right now. Make a f- simple fucking landing page. Right. Say, here's the broader protocol that we created. Mm-hmm. Now here's our node mm-hmm. on that protocol. Right. Yeah. And here's the other thing and I don't think that they will ever do this then create a governance an entire democratic governance system and channel for that node right Right. this is where we decide how the shit works Mm -hmm. from design to everything right to get on our node here are the values you need to have maybe you're maybe it's a quiz maybe they're you know they to streamline it, you're, we yeah. do what we do what Boomer Republicans have been asking for years and making the <laughs> tests to vote harder. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, you should have 125 IQ to vote. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, but you, they gave you, they're giving you the protocol on up top. Right. right. This is the this is the give and the take. If you don't want to deal yeah. with that, go ahead and do your own. Yeah. And here's what you need to know, and here's how it works. But this is in terms of the the trust and the cultural and subcultural credibility yeah. and the whatever. This is what we need. Right. Yeah. You know, I like, feel like I feel like also just personally from knowing you also and your kind of design sensibility. I feel like just I there. I there are so many. You meet people like yourself, and you realize there are so many ways to make things easier and better looking. Mm -hmm. yeah like and i think the reason so many so often those things aren't baked in to Mm -hmm. the other shit is because it just doesn't make money sense doesn't make money yeah and and if you do those two things make it look cool make it easy to understand and then it's free and then it's cool then it's like then it's like you're covering covering a lot of ground with just doing that because then you're at least passing it down it's like okay maybe this particular node or whatever is shit but look like this principle of governance you know, and now anyone can use that right right you right. know and right. i think i think us just being who we are and talking about this is already like a crazy upgrade yeah uh, mm-hmm. right. to the conversation yeah right you know what i mean it's yes. like right. the I fact t- that you're watching a show that because let's talk about how we're categorized First of all, it's going to be very hard to do that to begin with. But <laughs> two, it's like what we're adjacent to is pretty wild. It's to to have things like governance and these conversations had amongst what is ostensibly our audience. Right. It's kind of unprecedented. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And I you, agree. Yeah. And if you can take that model and just say that's the part that you can, uh, that you can take and, you know, yeah. take it wherever you want, you right. know? Then that's just a you know something that's fundamentally opposed to something like that. What a, what was it called? The fucking gab. Gab. Or, yeah. Gab. Yeah. Is that was that Tulsi Gabbard? Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> Social media. Oh my god. The fucking. She's a full on right wing shill now. I mean, it was obvious yeah. from the beginning though that this was that was the the kind of pipeline. Like yeah. And it was just a long, 
the Bernie Wars finally <laughs> settled. The dust is finally settled. Right. Right. Look at what line. <laughs> Look at where you stand now. Yeah. All the dust is settled. All right. All of your lofty, <laughs> your loft, lofty flirtations with the left. <laughs> Look at where you are now. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes down to it, I'm actually a proud Air Force veteran, uh, Joe Rogan. Um, did you see, oh my God, there was a clip like of Joe Rogan that. talking to a guy who's like, the reason dragons existed oh, and yeah. there weren't any fossils because they had bird bones. <laughs> they had bird he's bones. Like, like an eagle? <laughs> <laughs> so they would have disintegrated. What is really? this like conversation? I don't know. Yeah. Man. I'll, I'd have to find Did it. you just quote that verbatim? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. There was a guy yeah. there who was like, actually, dragons existed probably, but and then he's, they're, they're well, fo not fossilized because their bones are hollow like a bird's. The wildest part he said it was like, yeah, and then they were all probably killed by, you know, knights. Uh, are they saying, are they, knights, <laughs> are Shrek they saying, killed one. Are they saying, uh, are these, is he saying dragon in the sense of like breathing fire? He's like, it's, it's, it's possible that there were flying lizards that, yeah, dragons. I just want to know the five if, if they're if he's pushing the fire like that. Right. Far. If he's pushing the fire yeah. concept. Yeah. And Joe's just like, but did they breathe fire? <laughs> is doesn't fire that, good? Doesn't that make it a dragon? So like, what is a dragon? What makes it? Um, is it a dragon if it doesn't breathe fire? Jamie, pull that up. Google that for me. That's just like a, a like a pterodactyl. Am I right? Right. Right. It's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is rich. Um, yeah, I don't know how to get this to you, but can I? I, I have an, uh, an immediate sort of feeling and thought. Yeah. yeah. On that. On that subject. On it dragons. Makes, yes. Um, <laughs> so my favorite dragon. You were wearing a drag a dinosaur earlier, but you swapped out. It's oh. working on you, isn't it, Connor? You what? see, you see a dinosaur and a dragon is the same thing. It's already working on you. <laughs> See, this is what watching Joe wow. Rogan does to your yeah. fucking wow. mind, man. Just similar phenotypes. Stay away, That's all it man. takes. One Stay drop. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, wow. the Joe Rogan, not even once. Wow. <laughs> nah, but it, it's literally on this point of like how maybe we've talked about it before. And I, again, I'm like, I know I'm going into spicy territory, but I'm also so fed up that I don't care at a certain level. Right. I'm like... We, I wrote like an internal thing. It was a, I guess it's technically an internal document responding to somebody else within 400 million. And um, I used this phrasing around uh, appreciating certain things about mystery mm. without encouraging mystification and um, obfuscation mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. around around certain things. And what I was like speaking to on that is how we're in this moment where it's t also tied to the shaman piece, like the digital shaman piece um, right. in the sense of like all types of ideas are fucking flying right now. Yeah. yeah. Like that aren't grounded in reason and logic. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say it. Astrology. <laughs> You hate it so much. <laughs> <laughs> he has a personal beef with astrology. And let me yeah. well, let me give some context, which people who wa they watch the show they already know. I was raised in a fundamentalist Christian household, right? I was raised, I was indoctrinated. But God's real. Yeah, <laughs> right. No disrespect to God. To no disrespect, no disrespect to God. even to people who believe in a, astrology or whatever. Organized religion is one thing. I feel like. We're going through a shift with organized religion. I haven't looked at the statistics or the data. This is just going off of mm -hmm. feeling in a sense that, yeah, we're not like in the church. There's a lot of people breaking off with organized religion. There's all this fucked up shit going on in the world. So people are looking for some type of existential thing to like fill a void, perhaps left by these larger belief institutions or whatever, Yeah, which now creates this fertile ground for this very like more f fractured metaphysical mythology yeah. whatever and it's like we talk about the imagination all the time we talk about creativity all the time when it starts crossing over into this territory where it's tied to like 
political agendas and tied to and authoritarian ones like these are people where they're they're trying to impose something right. onto you even if it's something as tiny as a judgment right right and with with the astrology thing that's astrology didn't start to really like get more under my skin yeah until people going. started giving me shit because i did not believe in it right or they started making judgments on me. I'm sorry, over the goofiest, yeah, no. most yeah. illogical thing I can, imaginable. I can full throatedly say do you astrology understand what I'm is saying? dumb as fuck. Do you do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. It's well, like it's... it's like if you love we love Harry Potter, right? But we're not gonna like walk into a room and be like, What house uh yeah. are you a part of? Do you do you identify with? And then fucking like literally treat right. you differently because of how you respond to that right Do you I know mean, i mean we're in an age where i look i'm with you don't been, put it I'm, on me I've that's been, my look, whole thing been, don't put it on me like, i've been bullied for being a libra i've been bullied for having green text bubbles all this shit i wouldn't put any of this right. shit past and only anybody. one of those right. is fair uh, okay <laughs> 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 Which is like all oh, this. Oh man, yeah. I know this is gonna upset. I'm no, gonna apologizing well, in advance because I know no, this is. Apologize. No, don't apologize. What's there who, apologize who for? Fuck? It's fucking made up, dumb shit. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> Yo one of the funniest things I read. Uh, I was... Should we spend the rest of this episode like literally explaining why? Well, real quick, all well, I wanted to say bro. is just is just fucking. It is the most popular religion now. Yes. Thank yeah. you for putting it in a sentence. That's what I yeah. was leading like up to. That, yeah. It fully. is the yeah. new religion. You psychopaths are talking about this like it's fucking math. Yeah. People yeah. were saying, yeah. you know, what was it? Five year four, and I think was like, man, and Quavo's an Aries, so you know he's really taking this hard, bro. And people are like retweeting it, like Quavo if he wasn't an Aries, and it's like pictures of people <laughs> dancing happily. It's like you're out of your mind. But even Yo. think about how it's we're walking on eggshells. Talking about it, yeah, that I've is seen, a sign. That, that is a sign what? of my point. Okay, why should anyone feel that way? Talking about belief systems, right? If you're making people feel that way, there's a fucking problem. Yo, like there's a fucking problem. Yeah. I'm gonna jump on the train with Connor and say fuck astrology. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not walking on eggshell. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. The only good. But you're only... right. I've seen people get upset when you say that to them. Bro. They're like, okay, you don't need to be so negative. You don't need to. Whoa. Well, they're First... either doing that or they're saying, oh, it's just for fun. Yeah, it's just for fun. It's, it's like, fun. are you lying to yourself or me or both? Like, what, yeah. what's going on here? Two things. Like, two things. The only good product of astrology is the album Aquemini by Outkast. <laughs> uh, and two, oh. uh, the funniest and thing. Skyrim, I, and Skyrim, Skill Trees. And Skyrim, Skill Trees, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> uh, but the funniest thing I read about uh, about astrology, I think it was Adorno, maybe. He was like, he was like the, the reason people are so willing to buy into this shit is because it uses, like, the cosmos and like the most empirical shit the most like the mathematical movement of the stars and planets to tell you to like give yourself a break today <laughs> like right. do, like you know just chill out today be kind to yourself to do like the it uses the biggest scientific shit to to tell you to do nothing basically yeah. and so it doesn't can, can, see it doesn't feel like a big deal I'm you gonna, know i'm gonna i have a video i want to pull up but i want to introduce some people to something that maybe they have not heard of before. <laughs> Just for anyone who has not heard of this before, and I'm saying this genuinely, confirmation bias is the tendency to search for, interpret, favor, and recall information in a way that confirms or supports one's prior beliefs or values. People display this bias when they select information that supports their views, ignoring contrary information, or when they interpret ambiguous evidence as supporting their existing attitudes. The effect is strongest for desired outcomes, for emotionally charged issues, and for deeply entrenched beliefs. Confirmation bias cannot be eliminated, but it can be managed, for example, by education and training in critical thinking skills for an example that's relevant to our previous conversation it's a lot like if you think jewish people run the media and then you know the one jewish man who invented the 360 deal it's a lot like that it's true it's a lot like that and i will say <laughs> thank you for bringing that. Oh, thank you seriously and then there's a parallel with fucking fortune tellers for people who think astrology is legitimate, but the fortune telling shit is is quack, whatever. It's the yeah. same shit mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. You put out you put out a broad 
a broad enough feeling or character trait or whatever and you you kind of just keep by get doing guesswork you refine it down to where you, you you're you're using the the stuff that you're using the descriptors that to the person it feels so specific and so whatever but in reality it's you're talking about human feelings and traits that lots of people feel not yeah. that we're not very different people and that we don't have different experiences of course yeah. but this is it's the same thing at play yeah you know i mean i was talking to Niles about this yesterday it's like it, it's the same argument that you can make about nation states belief systems all these things where people just have this cognitive dissonance where they can believe in their one thing and still say like all these other ones are bullshit you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. it's like that's confirmation it's the yeah selective yeah it's just yeah. yes exactly it's like most people like islamophobia is big right now for the most part it's be it's not because unless you're bill maher it's not because i don't believe in anything it's because no i believe in this thing over here Right. And so you're like, fuck Muslims, I'm a Christian, fuck Jewish people, I'm this. Yeah, or right. like or fuck Russia, I'm American, fuck China. It, but like you could just say fuck yeah. all of this shit. Yeah. You know? To, to just to broaden it out and maybe and maybe like give astrologists a break, I guess. And, it's fuck all of this shit. It's and, not just y'all. Right. I'll throw I'll throw a bone. Cause if I may, you brought up tarot cards and psychics, and it's like I can see how all of this is fun. But it's yeah. we're, we're all so bored. It's becoming more than fun. It's bec we're investing in it. You're like, and people oh. are making money. They are exploiting other yeah, people oh yeah. off of this yes. shit. Yeah. That's yeah. the real. That's the sh just like how I felt growing up in the church and feeling like, wow, we are getting fucking exploited and scammed. Right. Mm -hmm. Just like the healers. Just like the whatever. And again, to be clear, it's the institutional part I'm talking about. It's not just if you want to believe in something. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. Right. It's the institutional shit where somebody, for example, dog, this is- uh, Infrastructural maybe, even. Infrastructural, yeah. And look, this part is like, uh, maybe a little bit personal, but I was at my grandma's funeral last, uh, last summer in Nigeria. And I remember just like they're reading Bible passages and every single one, every single one is about like being a faithful servant to your serving your master, all of this shit. And I'm just watching all these African people read these passages. Yes. And I'm just like, yes. are you not hearing yes. the like obvious yes. shit here? Mm -hmm. Are yes. you not hearing the obvious way that they position this yes. fucking figure? It can be used that, a lot of different ways. It can right. be used as a, you yeah. know, one big way that's summed up by Michael Bakunin in a fucking text you could read mm -hmm. where literally, uh, God is perfect, people are not. God is a master, humans are servants. Right. God also, you can't see him, so we don't we don't have a physical representation right. on Earth. So why not just say why not just put the state right and there? These are the interpreters. Of, these are the interpreters for yes. for the God. And also, so yeah, how, like them. God was the state before the world. Right. State. It's like maybe ask yourself why all the most patriotic people are also super religious. Right. You know, and it's a state. A, I wanted to say this. A part of me, because t from the infrastructural, organizational, the the grifters, it's like. Oh man, you got all these different charts and you got all they're they're really fleshing it out. They're fleshing out their their mythology. And the a part of me is I'm thinking of, you know, like Rick, like thinking about the trauma response. Yeah. Thinking about how for a lot of these people, it's just them trying to feel some degree of control. Like there's some degree yeah. of like predictability in the chaos that that we're living yeah. through and suffering under 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 these systems right right and it's like it's just a more secure I met a woman one time. more secure and more safe because i can predict it and i and i can i i feel like i'm in control i know who is who and and i and it's just it's a little bit more of some, something that i can feel and it's and hold on to right. and my whole thing is like right around the corner there's some deeper digging you'd have to do but it you feel way better when, right. when you when yeah. you can kind of just the critical thinking piece, you know, yeah. try and just be face some difficult truths and realities so that you can find others who are facing it too and trying to find a better way and actively making life better for each other. Don't hang on to these hyper individualistic myths and whatever that it's just putting more money in these scammers pockets. Mm -hmm. Right. I met a woman one time who was like, yeah, I just kind of believe in magic because it makes me feel safe. Like, 
she was like a witch type vibe and it's like Voldemort did magic <laughs> what <laughs> she didn't know about Ava Kedavra uh, uh, but like someone's to that never idea. seen Halloween Town <laughs> okay but to that idea that it the like warlock. it makes you feel like you can control shit yeah like, yeah I just that's saw, a stand in it's like I just saw Scooby Doo and the witch's ghost and it just made me feel so safe you know <laughs> <laughs> this is the first this the is hex girls this is just like the fundamental just it's literally a minute long and it's bill nye talking about astrology this is like the oh let's this is like it. the, Throw the it perfect on. intro because then it just he's getting at the core issue yeah. and critique and then it's just a matter of how much detail do you want to go into here to to flesh out what he said you believe in astrology a little bit and what makes you say that because i can see the stars that was a wise you answer probably know your sign or do you? Try this. Wait for your birthday, then stay up all night and watch where the sun rises. It will pass in front of one of the 12 constellations of the zodiac. They say, I am a Sagittarius. So on my birthday, you might expect the sun to rise Sag in the gang. constellation I'm Sag too. Sagittarius. And it did 2,000 years ago when the Babylonians made all this up. But it doesn't now. In the last 2,000 years, the Earth has wobbled like a top. So now on my birthday, the sun rises in Scorpio, not Sagittarius. So maybe you'd have to be a Capricorn to be a Sagittarius, and Scorpios would have to be Libras. See, astrologers are off one full sign. In 2,000 more years, they'll be off two signs, but they don't seem to care. <laughs> so in these reflective moments, I ask myself, Am I a fun-loving Sagittarius or a sexy Scorpio? <clears throat> He's like, this dumbass shit, I'm not even going <laughs> to rotate my whole body towards you to explain it. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you this over my shoulder. It's like you're you're looking at the past also when you're looking yeah. at the stars. You're yeah. so far well, away. Maybe 2,000 years ago when yeah. this dumb shit was made. Right. Yeah. What was that? Uh, what was that? Video? No, but I'm saying even you see what I'm saying beyond that, even beyond when it was made, the actual stars. Yeah. What was that video you linked a while ago where somebody said that? Where they were just like. Maybe yeah. it was a. I think it was that. Jubilee. Maybe it was that. Oh, OK. Where they're, uh, where they're talking about like. It was like astrologers versus astrolo versus astrologists. Yeah, I think it and was they were just, that's funny as hell. And dude was that's straight unfair. Up, yeah, right. <laughs> and dude was straight up like, yeah. So the star you're, he was kind of like, I remember him being like condescending about it. He's like, yeah. So like the star you're praying to, like you're just <laughs> you're just seeing the light from when it exploded thousands and thousands yeah. of years oh, ago. Oh yeah, that's fucking true. Also, bro. Come yeah, on. right. It's like these things are not static, man. But that's, I mean. That's the shit I was talking about is like Bro, they gotta do a fourth of a year every year. <laughs> right. So they do that once every four years. This shit's right. not accurate, bro. But that's the shit I'm talking about is like the the woman talking about like I can see the stars, that's why I believe in it. It's like there's just enough like scientific foundation for right. you to be like, Yeah, it's more real than like Jesus. I can't see Jesus. So would that mean that all life has zodiac signs? I mean, what does that mean? Like, you know what I'm <laughs> oh. saying? Oh, we just happened to behave. I mean, yeah, I've right. I've also heard that maybe it was like a originated as like a farming technique. Like, oh, if you have cows that are born in the winter, they'll act this way or whatever. Like, that is the only thing that ever makes sense to me. But yeah, even know, that, bro. even that, I'm like, I, I don't know. Up, I don't know about that, bro. Yeah, man. I don't know. I'll find it. What are you? I'm black. I'm Af I'm African American, a, Ni a Nigerian, a but that's a nation state distinction that mm -hmm. I don't really. <laughs> I'm like, but I the going back to what I said in that internal writing, like there is mystery and there's beauty in mystery. Yeah. And but my brain from that point doesn't go to like, well, let's just sit in that for till the end of time. It, right. It's it's there's also beauty in discoverability. Yeah, there's beauty in in trying to discover and unpack. There's so much what beauty is unknown. Yeah. There's yeah. so much beauty in discovering things that are already here. Yeah, right. Like I I sometimes think about all the books I'm gonna die having not read, and it's right an unimaginable right. yeah. amount. Right, that yeah. my eyes will never touch. Right, and it's like 
you you there's so much world to explore here in the actual reality that we live in i mean there's a lot of horror also yeah, there's yeah. A lot of terrible things right a lot of that yeah. but you can still i mean that's the thing about being a fan of video games or movies or manga is like these are things where there is a catalog so deep you'll never yeah. span all it's full borders yeah so you can continue having that discoverability that excitement yeah that beauty right but even so in much... terms of people interpersonally mm-hmm. how crazy is that with all these people on this planet that you would you About think eight you, billion you could you could like reduce them to right. like however many signs there are yeah not that there aren't some very fundamental basic human instincts and feelings that we share that isn't this crazy you know personality right. types no no right. well, yeah but it's like there, there's it's not like there's a certain amount of things we can feel as humans right so it's not right. to say that that there aren't some simple things that we share in common but it's like right. but to 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 learn where people come from what they went through and how that shapes who they are and yeah. how they feel and how they see the world yeah learning sure. people's stories and yeah, yeah right. culture as well yeah and it's like when you try to put people in all of these like boxes on whatever basis it's like at a certain point it's like you have so many of them just like you're just you're just you at a certain mm. point you know what i'm saying it's like i remember when there was there was like a the discussion. I know exactly what you mean by that. Yeah. yeah, and like there was the discussion about like how there are like however many like tens of distinct genders. There were like ninety distinct genders, and people were trying to put a specific number on it, as opposed to like there's a continuous gender spectrum. You right. know what I'm saying? And it was like at a certain point, if you're getting into the if you're getting into three digits with genders, it's right. like. We're just individual humans. people. Yeah. We're humans, humans with different humans. Yeah. yeah it's exactly. like how like like there's Exactly. No... It blows through your categorization. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know? And like your taxonomy. Yeah. Like that was my only my only issue with that discussion ever, you know? Is like Robert yeah. Sapolsky has this beautiful Stanford lecture on YouTube where he talks about how how humans categorize and like the pitfalls of that mm. that I highly recommend people check out. Yeah. Um, if yeah. you search his name, Robert Sapolsky um, mm. on YouTube, mm-hmm. it will come up. That's S A P O S L K Y. Yeah. It'll be like the first result. Yeah. Highly recommend that. On the tip of discovery, I discovered this past week, how, just how much I fucking love Marvin Gaye. Mm. I knew Great I fucked stuff. with Marvin Gaye, but like, I listen to what's yeah. going on, like on repeat the past few days. That album, like, this album is just makes me cry. Yo, every time, on I, the dot. Yeah, same beats just makes me fucking cry, bro. When he hits that, um, that's destined to die. Yeah, that part, that shit. <laughs> You just went to the the most gut wrenching song, yeah, <laughs> on the album, yeah, <laughs> in line, yeah, <laughs> right. But yes, yeah. I mean that, that save the children. That line is just so like, save, I really save want, the children, save the children. And it's it's funny because that title is almost like, given what hap- what like, just how people abuse like the concept of the children for political like gain. That mm. title is. Uh, to me, kind of the corniest one on the album, but it's the most gut wrenching song. He's saying it raw. He's saying yeah, right. the raw baseline human yeah. f- feeling. He is expressing it in the most baseline. Yeah. I mean, bro, I was very plainly. Yeah. You know? It's like, I really want to know what he was on when that album came out. I know it was like the height of um the of Vietnam and all this stuff, and just like but I hadn't really thought about like just I think if you really unpacked it Marvin like Marvin Gaye would have been like this is a social ecology album mm-hmm. you know <laughs> like Mercy Mercy Me is literally the subtitle is the ecology this is confirmation bias it is confirmation <laughs> bias it is confmation <laughs> bias but I want to believe it's it it's gotta be honest it's also art it so it is, is up 
to interpretation yeah. and takes on a different meaning for different people in different right. times and places. But it's also like, but I just, yes. I would like to know, that's why I say I want to know the background the of like what he was talking about, you know? Because yes. mm -hmm. it's like... So there's so many, of, many things the ecology could mean. Yeah, know, it's and it's like, thing. I mean, it's the same way I feel about Miyazaki. It's like, I know he's not 100% there, but I believe... There's, there's a, a seed. There's a seed, and there's there. a degree of which I believe if you just like put this shit in front of a person, they would be like, "Yeah, that's what I was talking about." Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, 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 that's so. That's a good way to yeah, put it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. so many people. Yeah, that's so many people. people. Yeah, yeah, right. Like how how many artists out there like had no fucking clue what they were talking about on their records? But Bro, then just, just in general, a lot of people fuck with this shit that don't even realize they do, and it's it's sad. Yeah. A lot of people like. I argue this is the most popular idea, actually. Yeah. Like, I refuse yeah. to accept the topsy turvy <laughs> reality we live in. This yeah. is the most popular. Idea. This is yeah. what. Yeah. This is, and and therefore I have a faith in it. <laughs> yeah. And then that's that goes to what we were saying in the group chat earlier today. It's like, then it just it conversation then goes to, what are the illusions that are being thrusted on us every single day? We can't we we can't see another yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. How do yeah. we shatter that to let the light in so we can actually have an imagination about all the other ways in which we could live with each other? Yeah, it's, it's wild. We even see it to be honest. But once really, you get there, that's how it feels sometimes. Once you yeah. get there, and these ideas are presented, yes, I agree. Yeah, the shit we're talking about in terms of freedom and about cooperation and no bosses and no landlords Ooh, yeah that's can. the most fucking <laughs> and it's like it is Who's it is to try? liberty and autonomy <laughs> that's yeah. i would if i were yeah. to choose two words like liberty and autonomy not a uh, u.s nation state conception of yeah. liberty bastardization of liberty but real like we are there's no more shackles on right. us yeah there's no more material, social, psychological shackles on us anymore. And we figure out how to just fucking live. Yeah. <laughs> and explore and like <laughs> um, that, And it turns out that that works works out better for the rest of the natural world too. Yeah. I'll say it again though. It's crazy we even see it. It's crazy. <laughs> like it's crazy that we yeah. even have a a glimpse at what those shackles are. Right. That's what I talk about with Zach. Like we're just like, especially looking at it's lucky we're our lucky our particular childhoods too. We're like, how did we fucking go from there to fucking here? Right. <laughs> like, how did we even make yeah. it? Yeah. You know. I mean, bro, I'm looking at mine. I'm just like, got a dad who just used to watch fucking Farrakhan videos by himself, and like, and look at me now, pops. like tapes, tapes like for yeah. the television. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and man. just like all the shit that there was so much shit in my way you know yeah before exactly we're getting to this point I'm exactly like, yeah i think if i wasn't a near i wasn't really a social outcast but i was so out of place yeah where i in every way grew up i mean to where yeah. i was like it felt like i was like man i'm dog shit at everything that counts huh i'm like yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. like oh fuck right like, and shit said, wait does it do those things count right huh do and I, I think if i didn't have to adopt like a totally like all right i don't know what the fuck whatever i'll just I, I don't give a fuck then yeah like i don't i yeah uh, right yeah. cuz so right. many people grew up just like Oh, Valid, I fit in validated this. Just I fit enough. in this real easy. Validated that's like, just enough. That's yeah. fucking great. That's what I wish. That's what yeah. I wish. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's not. But like at the you time, did. that's at what time, I had wished. Just yeah. like you want to be great in. to like have a sport I'm good at, or like have not be <laughs> a kid who doesn't feel like running around and shit, yeah. and like or just whatever a million different things. And yeah, if you're just like good at sports and you're good in school and you're semi popular or whatever and you're like you happen to want to like go to school for finance and you're good with numbers i mean we really it's gross how much as a society we like cherish people who are just good at numbers like yeah it's, it's wild each of those validations 
is a is is stapling you to the mesh of the matrix yeah. exactly You're each the, yeah. one of those validations is just i don't know mm-hmm. why the picture of the like the like pale white like evangelion thing yeah, like the nailed to the cross <laughs> picture of and right. so, and then Lilith you're just, and then, yeah. you're, and then yeah. you're just melting into all of the illusions. Yeah, yeah, that right. kill and it's you, so much. It's that so you. much harder to. I think that's why, like, right. So few people. Yeah, bro. I, mean, I don't know. Dog. It's just it, it, it wigs you out when you really start thinking about it. Like, right. why am I more open to the? Because it's like when you're in it, you're like, oh god damn! Like <laughs> you can't, you can't not feel strongly mm-hmm. about it right and so you also have that thing of like yo no one fucks with this right. like not really not but really like, right. they just haven't yeah well but i'm saying, I'm saying there reason. are people that fuck with they this but i'm exposed. like god damn yeah. it's out of like yeah. sync how fire it is and how i mean it's like popular it is. it's it's the sensation of feeling like you're rejected from some form of community so it's like fuck it why not try to find it somewhere else right you know right it's the shit that it's yes shit that, yes. that happens to queer kids that get kicked out of home they're like let me find a queer community then why yeah. why the fuck would i try to fit into this shit in the first place right. and it's like and they happen to my... make some of the most fire shit that's ever been made yeah yes, right yes and then in my case it's like having been just that gifted kid track from like fifth grade being even earlier than that but like fifth grade like the school decided like uh getting that sensation of like yeah you're a lot smarter than the people around you and then you just like gradually realize that you're not. Mm-hmm. You just didn't have to study up front. And now you get to high school and you don't know how to study. And now people start to reject you because you're because all that shit that they <laughs> was the basis of your identity to them is right. now falling apart. And in my case, I was in a school with mostly white kids, so I already felt out of place. Uh, went to college um, and was kind of like. I don't really feel like I want to be here. I started doing stand up and then just like all of these things kind of came together where I'm just like, I don't really feel like I'm supposed to be in any of these places. <laughs> right. None of this shit makes sense to me. And and now I'm here with y'all. <laughs> and it makes a lot more sense than a lot of shit. Yeah. Uh growing up, you know? And it's and it's like a big part of it is like getting to this point and feeling the sensation of like freedom that you realize you missed out on your whole youth you know like i was saying this yesterday in the in the chat of just like having that constant like overbearing sensation of just like is the shit that i'm doing useful right and there's never the question of like is it u- useful to who who the fu- who is or productive or productive right. <clears throat> And it's never like, you don't get to ask the question of, do I enjoy this until you've made enough money to decide what you enjoy on your own. And by that point, you're already too far gone. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I you don't really dude, enjoy anything. That concept makes me so sad. The people who are yeah. just like, I'll live life later. It's like, oh, bro, man. I did oh, that. Man. I yeah. I I started playing. I started playing. Like I'll eat shit now and be just sad, but yeah. I'll Bro, have I, time to be happy later. I no. started playing music when I was fifteen. I started playing bass when I was fifteen. I sold my bass when I was nineteen because I didn't have any <clears> money, <throat> and I and I had a sense that like I just felt like I couldn't ask my parents for anything mm-hmm. because like. To this day, I don't know if my parents had money or not. I have no idea. But I always, it was always like, no, just go ask your dad or go ask your mom. I don't have it right now. And right. so I always had the sensation. I couldn't ask for shit. I had to get shit myself. And if I needed some money, I sell some shit that I have. I don't ask my parents. And so I stopped. I didn't play. I didn't actually like physically play an instrument until six months ago when i could buy another bass myself no shit really yeah it was that long it was that long holy fuck and it's like it's exciting to like on the discovery point from earlier it's like exciting to discover that like i still really love music and playing yeah. music but yeah. it's also like it's like really sad you know yeah. to think about like 
not even like beyond the point of like I could have been so good at this. Like yeah. that's not it. That's not the point. It's like you could have enjoyed it. For I could have enjoyed it for yeah. that. What twelve years mm-hmm. that I wasn't yeah. doing it. You know, it's like it's just a fucking bummer. You know. Yeah. There's a, but, another bummer layer too for me of like, I don't want to be the exception of a person that gets to enjoy. I want to be a part of broader cultures and subcultures that enjoy and yes. share in that. In wow. That community. Yeah. yeah. Right. I don't feel happy and content being like, oh, look, I, I got my space and my situation. Or even if I were to put out bodies of work that are successful by yeah. other people's metrics, what I'm now, I'm just sitting on a fucking like, on a on a hill or something by myself like looking at other people sitting on hills like in the over across the horizon right like it's, what what, what is, is where is the humanity in that where yeah. is the celebration in that right. where is the, what like, is it like being a celebrity right now or is like a really rich person like what is yeah. that like right like that must be like you're looking at a blizzard outside like whoa yeah that's fucked Bro, literally, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you're just like, wow, we're saving here, but uh, yeah. you know, like, but it's right. like insane, you know? Right? Because it's like, at least us, we're like, we're we got good coats on, but we're outside, you know, in the blizzard. Yeah. But like a rich, like a fully, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine. How do you enjoy anything to a degree? I mean, there's there's yeah. some of it, but yeah. you have to have these moments where it all kind of gets sucked out of you. And you're like, yeah. oh, that's right. Like, I'm living in a fucking nightmare world. Oh, <laughs> that yeah. That has to happen. Yeah. That I has mean, to happen. I mm-hmm. mean, bro, I feel like Kanye's on the precipice of that at all times. Of just like, this is, this is fucked, but I can't even begin to articulate how. And so I develop all these fucked up conspiracy theories. You know what I'm saying? It's like these, like, these are people that just can't, they can't comprehend, they can't comprehend that they did the wrong thing their whole life mm. you know what i'm saying it's like once you get to yeah. that once you get Usually. to that point you have to you have to reform your worldview to make it make sense that you live the life that you did he got like you know? a high score on a really fucked up game yes exactly right. i feel like that's a conundrum with a lot of wealthy people or people with access and power and you put and, your and, soul and into that shit yeah yeah and right. but but here's the thing i feel like there's a lot of them where they they're they're torn like they they know that they have a certain degree or like a a spark of an awareness that there's another path or there's another way to do things that's better yeah and they just can't sort of like get their way to that that open door of oh there's still time to like end on another note right. there's still time yeah. to do something different yeah. there's still time to be of help and service there's still like you can place a central role in that right. and there are going to be rational people that aren't going to hold your past over your head right they're just going to look at how you treat people and what you do with what you have to get us all to a better place right and and it's like there's all these things keeping them from from opening that door you know, maybe it's like a certain degree of cognitive dissonance, but also who's surrounding them and their values and their wealth and their interests. It's just like complex web. But when you see the face to face conversations, that's where all these contradictions come up and blow up in their face. And yeah. And for the most part, they react like children. You know, they mm-hmm. just they get defensive and right. shut down or they. You know, it's like Jay Z saying that. He said, "Oh, they created. They create these words like capitalist, right? It's like, all right, right. what are you talking about? But okay, let's like put that to the side. That <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Um, but then it when you put that to the side, you're like, are you listening to what that critique is? Are you right. listen? Are you li- actually like? Are you even open?" To that, or is it too painful what the implications could be? Right, right. And the implications being painful, it's like the point isn't for you to sit and feel guilty and like flagellate and hit yourself. It's to analyze what happened so you can look at what's happening now and go a better way. Right. Mm -hmm. Look at what could happen. I think there's almost. You can live with yourself too. 
Yeah. You can. There's yeah. a way. Yeah. There's right. a way you can do it. Right. You know? Yeah. I, I, I feel like um, there's almost a trauma attached to it of being successful under capitalism where it's like you have literally sunk blood, sweat, and tears into just money. It's what Paulo yeah. Freire says. You mm. you've dehumanized yourself. Right. 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 You've you've it's like you've um let your soul get sucked by that fucking thing from Hercules like you you're just oh, like yeah. dumping more of your soul into it and the fact that you're like fundamentally affected by that experience and then people are being like that was bad it is like a yeah. it is kind of like a well I was beat growing up and I turned out fine. you know it's like a right. well this this is good you know you start becoming reactionary because you had to go through it. yeah it's like it is something emotional that you have to go through that you feel like you struggled to yeah whatever, you to whatever it. extent and it does fuck people up yeah but like I it, wanted I wanted to say on the Freddy point too yeah. and he's right the way out for everybody is a process of humanization. Yeah. That's the way out for everybody. Right, you right. as a capitalist or someone who you're a boss, you're a landlord or whatever, and you've made it to this point and now these critiques are being raised to you or you're seeing this, this cultural thing and you're not so far gone that you don't have a heart anymore. Right. And so now you're sitting with these feelings and you're assessing it and you're feeling guilt and you're you're feeling all these different things it's like the end point isn't supposed to be where you know you're guillotined or you're mm. what that's not the ideal you know right. like that's just the, that's the rage that people are feeling under the structural right. violence that you perpetuate right. but that the, the end point is supposed to be a, a systems and a way of being with everyone that fully humanizes everyone. And for you to actually humanize yourself, you can't have a hand in in these systems that they make you more money and give you more power, but they isolate you from everyone else. They right. make you feel mm -hmm. more paranoid and more skeptical. And they make you feel like you feeling, know, you, feeling a class divide is real. Like I mean, yeah. when yeah. someone fundamentally has less Cause, bread than cause you, you know, it's just like because you know everybody's talking about eat the rich, <laughs> gobble the rich, gobble the rich. <laughs> but it's like there's a hundred, there's a hundred and ten percent, gobble up the rich. This is none of this is to paint this like some sort of rosy picture of our yeah. overlords or something. Mm, right. None of this yeah. is to say that to imply that most of the tiny group of people that are ruling over us have some type of like you know good motivations or something like that it's just to say that there are there are going to be people who have more and who have more access and they, there's a cognitive dissonance the way that they see themselves morally or in terms of their values or their principles is not actually like it doesn't <laughs> it's not consistent with the structures and institutions that they themselves maintain mm -hmm. and and perpetuate. And it's just to say that there's an opening there. And I think there's enough people where it's like, yeah, like, cause we, we need, we need like a, resources to spark these, these, these projects that are gonna, gonna inspire people or at least gesture towards something different. Just like with liberals and conservatives and whatever, mm -hmm. they're all bankrolling their political visions and their agendas off of blood money and money that they made and are making from the systems that they're actively trying to maintain. Right. But it's like, there's gotta be a cross section. It goes back to what we, we talked about this, some, some episodes back, but there's gotta be a cross section of people where they're, they're genuinely conflicted and confused and, and, uh, and even people that maybe, Dog, it's like we literally talked about it. It's like if you fucking if you're a billionaire, even if you have over four or five million dollars liquid mm -hmm. or in assets or whatever, you are fine. Right. So what is your north ideological north star? Mars. Really? Mars, dog. What yeah, is it? And we got what guys out here you, with tens of billions. For? Tens of billions to their own personal. What are you name? living for? Right. The fucking game, man. That TikTok That's where the all it is. She said, you have world building money. Yeah. Like yeah. you have world yeah. creating money. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Right. That was about so Beyonce, what? wasn't it? Yeah. 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 What are you living for? Right. 
what are you living for? Right. Are you really, are you going to live for um, an idea, a, a, a status that isn't, it's like, it, it's not going to, it's not forever. Yeah. You know, it's not like, and oh. what does that do for you? It's like, it's are you, yeah, it's, it's also maybe th there's also, there's a fatalism with a lot of these types too. They're like, well, this system is much bigger than, than me. I couldn't put a dent in this, this thing. <laughs> so Why, my, I couldn't put a dent. I might as well enjoy it while it's here. Even if my father's army. What am I going to stress, stress myself out even more? And it's like, no. You, these are you, all Killer Mike quotes, by the it way. It would be <laughs> less <laughs> stress for you. It would be less stress for you. Your business ventures wouldn't be these things where you're, you're tiptoeing yeah. or you're moving into a space where you know secretly everyone is just... They're not really they fucking hate you, or they don't even really right. like you, but it's they're there because of the right. money you put up. It, it, right. is, it is it is irrelevant. Why would you like create an apparatus of people and systems around you to where you can't even know that they actually love you and trust you? Why would yeah. you actively perpetuate that just for this feeling of power and status? Because you gotta right. get that is for your for, for something just it, it's like it's such you know people say low vibrations. It's yeah. like such a low. <laughs> And that's the goofiest part of it, that you could have that much power mm. for something so low vibration. Right. You know? Right. It's about money, nothing. power, respect. respect. <laughs> lie. Or you could just play, lie. or you could just play Sims and type Rosebud into the little thing and you got all the money right there. Or but here's where money, cash, hose. It, go, it comes full circle on Rick's point about trauma. Yeah. Cause with some of these motherfuckers, that's that's what it is. That's what I think about when I, I think of Kanye that. and the white validation bullshit that he's right. he's going through. Right. But I've that shit has real impact. Like a, a freeing moment where I like that I'm has just like don't give a fuck about Kanye anymore. Truly. Yeah. No, I don't. I, yeah. But I, I I'm just he's super relevant for this conversation. Like I'm, I'm sorry, not about him. About trying to understand him. Like I'm just like I don't. Or trying beats, to beats the fuck out of me. I don't know. I don't know why. Trying to understand, like, him, like, cause, cause, he, like, I'm getting to plan. a point where I'm like, is he actually just like evil as a person? Like, yeah, oh yeah. Let's yes. do away with that though. Right, like, right. It's like let's the morality. Like, yeah, let's thing. do away with that. It's like some shit happened to him in his developmental years right. that brought him to this place where he right. has all these fucking ideas and feelings in his head, and it's led to lots of money and status and power, which he's losing in real time. But it's also it's it's it leads to hurt. It can lead to dangerous things. This is why pe when people talk about fascism and they underscore the, this point about fear, it's so important. Right. You know, granted, when it's fascism and like white supremacy and whatever, the, di the dimensions are different. But people are carrying fucking trauma with them. And it right. and it it kind of moves into these fucking wild ideas and, and even actions. But I was just even on Kanye. I, I'm like, he comes to mind for obvious reasons. But but zeroing in on like, there the 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 specific that specific thing about white validation and status, and that being that being such a powerful, such a powerful motivating force in your life, yeah, to the point where it could be every everything that you do, right. everything that you do is just. And it's impacting millions of people, yeah. but it's just to get some semblance of something that you probably will never get. Right. It's unreachable. Right. Right. And it's, it's all because of shit you went through in your developmental years of life. Mm -hmm. Lies you were told, you know, just indoctrination, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. And that's obviously not everybody with wealth and power and status. For a lot of those motherfuckers, it's handed down as multi generational. It's, right. you know, and they're just kind of like, well, I, this is, I'm just in it. This is what I was handed by. Oh, this is just, I'm here. I don't know what this socialism <laughs> crap is, but I'm not. There's truly uh, nothing more unsettling than old money, young people. Yeah. And look, can I just say this? <laughs> For the record, I would much, 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 much rather us be spending most of our time talking about what we as poor and working class people can do right now. Right. Mm. But sometimes when I go, when I go there with people and I keep like swinging back to those, to that train of thought and, and that type of conversation, 
it feels like walking up the steepest mountain because of our obsession with personality in this country and celebrity in this country right. and status in this right. country. It almost feels like I have to start with people at the top layer of status and money and power to try and bring it back down to what we can do. Right. But I hate that. I wish yeah. we could all just look at each other and be like, yeah, let's just get free right now. Together. Right, right, right. But I, we have but, to constantly wrestle with these fucking distractions at yeah. the, the highest, most abstracted layers and levels. Again, and it's a yeah. fucking huge waste of time. Yeah. yeah. It's again, a it's a huge like, waste of time. It's, again, we talk all this shit about Kanye, and then there's still people being like, well, J. Cole is a much better ex role model, or like mm -hmm. Kendrick is much better. It's like, they're all, it's all the same shit. Right. I was telling you this the other day. Kendrick's Kendrick's album, he, I feel like he he just says all his most fucked up, wackest opinions on record, just so just as just to be like, can you believe I didn't say this on Twitter for the past five years? <laughs> right. Can you believe I held all this shit in? Yeah. Like that's what Kendrick does, you know? It's like they're all doing the same I shit. There's way more people. Yeah. There's mad people that are just like riding with Kanye silently, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. You know, and they see what's happening to Kanye and they don't want to do it. Like, what could we do without these motherfuckers? Bro. So much. Yeah. Yeah. Nick. What we could do without our bosses, what we could do without our landlords, all the space, all the opportunity in front of us right now. If we could just figure out how to fucking relate to each other in a different way. Right. You know? Right. I'm just like thinking about if. If the dudes from eighty five South show didn't have to be on Wild and Out first to <laughs> to make that show, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, they made a whole show on the basis of like, yo, we're the funniest part of this show. Let's just do it on show. Mm -hmm. If they didn't have to go through that whole process and people could just like baseline start with, what do we want to do? Right. You know, this whole this and whole. What do we got? What do we got? What do we want to do? What time, energy, and you know? resources do we have? Yeah. And what trust can we build with each other to to act on that and right. with that? Right. I'm just so fucking over people doing shit because it's gonna because it's gonna make money so they can get power over other people who then have a re reaction to how they're treated <laughs> under them, and it's just this thing. But after for most thing of after those thing. people looking at that too. You're just you live the rest of your life on the hamster wheel of capitalism. Right. You don't even get up to where you're where you're looking at. You spend your right. whole life looking up there, trying to get there, and eating shit the whole time. Right. Oh fuck, dude. You fire me up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, just, get out, get exhausting. off your fucking hamster wheel. <laughs> get it. Okay. Dude, there's this there's this kid I follow on TikTok. His name is Arya is bored. Shout out Arya is bored. He made the website I'm Schmacked. <laughs> And sold it for like so much money. And this wow. kid is like the most, he's the most gnarly TikTok account. He's like, you f you guys fucking wiggle mouses for corporations. I, I create ideas. So <laughs> he's so, he's so out of bounds. Oh um, it's 1030, oh. by the way. Hey. Just opencollective.com yeah, slash jaded jaded form. form. Just seeing how, letting you know. You Thank know. you. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. Um, How long? Push us back a little bit. Uh, oh no, I I was yeah no we got a good episode we got yeah. a fat one. I'm excited to watch what was yeah. going on while I was uh, exercising my body. It was mostly Duty. laughing, and then we just started talking. Yeah, yeah. As make, we do make, on this show, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Checks out. Please keep supporting. Thank you to everyone who's donating already. Um. I do believe that like you helping us and like people helping us is allowing us to not just help ourselves, but like help other people ultimately. So, yeah. And that's like a huge motivator for me personally. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If you that's can't the, already tell. That's the goal uh, long term. man. we're not just in it in this shit for us. And to help people help you know? themselves ultimately. That's, yeah. that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Help me help you help you help me. Help me by helping you, you help yourself so you can <laughs> help other people help themselves. <sighs> Ding and dong. Adam can continue. Just that, uh, yeah. Help. <laughs> 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 oh. Close up. 
Just like my life. Oh. <laughs> Spam WZ in the comments. You did good this episode. Let's be honest. Let's, <laughs> let's be honest. Let's, yeah, let's balance it oh, out. Yeah. Let's balance WZ. it out. WZ. Yeah, yeah. If we have merch, maybe the front says ZL. ZL, yeah. Dub L. Yeah. We'll see. Dub Z. We'll brutal. keep a run. It'll be a shirt that gets like Wi Fi updates of how many W's or L's you have. And it'll right. show on either side. It'll should be like a like, digital readout. Should do a website like is. Like, is the L train running today? <laughs> <laughs> this tells you if Z's W-ing or L-ing. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Someone else clap. I'm baked. All right. I'll I'll do it. I haven't done it in a minute, I guess. Let me see. Let me see if, Let's I, see if, you still see if I still got it. <laughs> I'm out of practice. <laughs> mm. I'm, I don't know what y'all like to do on what Invisible 4. I'm going to do after three because that's how I do it. Is that okay? I'm not letting you trick me, man. I just need confirmation. Okay. All right. We got one. All right. I'm with you. Okay. I'm with you. All right. Consensus vote. All right. Let's go. One, two, three. <laughs>